Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and we are in freshman English in the My Perspectives volume and we now turn in unit 6 to the Lucille Clifton poem, The Beginning of the End of the World. I'm, I'm with you on 761. However, before we go there, just flip back a page. Let's do a little bit of background work here. Um, in terms of Clifton herself, um, notice your dates, 12, uh, 1936 to uh, 2010. She did grow up in New York State, worked in government agencies until shortly after her first book was published. From there, Clifton offered many critically acclaimed collections of poetry. Her many honors include an Emmy Award, the National Book Award, the Greta Scott King Award, the Ruth Lilly Price for Poetry Award. Um, we've, uh, of course, in 303, we loved the poetry of Clifton for a long time, and we've given several lectures on LearnStrong.net. Along with this, uh, with this really interesting and challenging poem. Now, some background information that will help you here. Cockroaches have been around for 300 million years. They tell us they easily outlive the dinosaurs, and time will tell if they will outlast people as well. It's often said that only cockroaches could survive a nuclear war. That may be an exaggeration, but they are resilient creatures. A cockroach can withstand 10 times as much radiation as a person can. Now, of course, in keeping with our sixth unit and the notion of the end of the world and, of course, the apocalyptic or dysutopian uh, visions that we've been messing around with, we're going to play around now with the beginning of the end of the world. And notice that we'll start with a news report, cockroach population possibly declining. Okay, in other words, it's possible that maybe things are getting better. This poem will suggest otherwise. Maybe the morning the roaches walked into the kitchen bold with a bad selves, marching about the drains, not like soldiers, white priests, grim and patient in the sink. And when we ran the water, trying to drown them as if they were soldiers, they seemed to bow their sad heads, for us, not at us, and march single file away. Maybe then, the morning we rose from our beds as always, listening for the bang of the end of the world, Maybe then, when we heard only the tiny tapping and saw them dark and prayerful in the kitchen. Maybe then, when we watched them turn from us, faithless at last, and walk in a long line away. Now, we have said in a number of our comments in Unit 6 that so much of 20th and now 21st century writing has to, uh, about the... the uh, the apocalyptic end of the world and the dysutopian kind of visions. So much in poetry goes back to T.S. Eliot's Hollow Men. And I, we, we've given lectures already here uh, on LearnStrong.net of that important poem. This is the way the world ends, is the way the poem ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. We're going to obviously have referencing here to the bang. The first thing I'd like to point out about this poem, though, is notice the spacing at 2B. Notice at line 5 the, the separation between the word soldiers and like priests. Notice, we'll see it again a few lines later at 9 and 10, same thing. What's up with this spacing that's going on? Jot down what you think is going on there in your book. Some have pointed out this is Clifton's really subtle suggestion that the beginning of the end of the world will be the beginning of the end of normality. The thing that you would normally predict to happen it doesn't happen, and that we have some space in the line to kind of show that. Notice the use of the word maybe in this poem. Of course, in our big five, epistemology is our first what you can know, and we have often said the absolutist position, I know absolutely I'm sure. The relative position, there is no truth. The old problem with that is, of course, you're postulating a truth. Leads to the fallibilist position, I think I'm right, but I could be wrong, and this maybe will play right into that fallibilist understanding epistemologically. Maybe the morning the roaches walked into the kitchen bold with a bad selves. Notice the, the um, language usage here. Marching up out of the drains, not like soldiers, like priests. That is to say, what's going on at the end of the world? It might not be a military situation. It might be rather a spiritual or religious situation. Notice the Adjective, grim and patient in the sink. And then when we ran the water, trying to drown them as if they were soldiers. Of course, the cockroaches here, the roaches, are the symbol, right? What is the symbol? The only thing that will last, we might say, right? They seemed, again, more that 
infallibleness kind of language. They seem to bow their sad heads for us, not at us. That is to say, even the roaches at the end of the world, at the beginning of the end of the world, will pray for the human species that didn't have the intelligence or the wisdom to figure out a way to keep from either blowing ourselves away or ruining our environment so much that we destroyed our species or whatever it is that the speaker of this poem is suggesting will be the cause of the end of the world. Maybe then, the morning we rose from our beds is always listening for the bang of the end of the world. This, as always, is a key here. In other words, there comes a moment, this speaker is suggesting, when we begin to recognize, oh, this whole project's going to come to an end, isn't it? And the roaches seem to know that, and that's why they feel somewhat prayerful for the human species. Maybe then, when we heard only the tiny tapping and saw them dark and prayerful in the kitchen, maybe then, when we watched them turn from us faithless at last. Notice we go from priests to faithless and walk in a long line away. Even the cockroaches know and even the cockroaches don't seem to care. At level two, uh, at level 2A, obviously your themes here, you can write down the notion of the end of the world and who cares about that project. Even cockroaches can't um, really care too much that the human species were unable to figure out a way to sustain their own existence. At 2B, we've already pointed out the spacing. Notice the power of some of the word pictures or the images that are a part of this one. At 3A, relate this to the other texts of Unit 6. We'll have a couple of more poems here coming that you can easily relate this poem to as well. And then finally, what are your thoughts about this poem at 3B, your own personal response? Do you think the world ends with a bang or with a whimper, as T.S. Eliot will say it in, uh, in Hollow Men? What are your thoughts about the end of the world and the ways that it's going to happen if it does happen? And where will you want to be if it's the end of the world when you are alive? Well, it's an interesting poem. I hope this poem leads you to more of Clifton's great, great work. Thank you.